Welcome to the CFO channel. My name is Ali and I simplify accounting and finance concepts. In this video, we're going to cover what the term cash conversion cycle means. That's one big term, cash conversion cycle. If you look at a lot of explanations of what the term cash conversion cycle means, you'll get a lot of accountants who will throw terms at you, such as cash conversion cycle equals DIO plus DSO plus DPO. What does that even mean? Basically, accounts throw more terms and acronyms at you, so you become even more confused about what the term cash conversion cycle means. In this video, I hope to break down the term cash conversion cycle for you so that you can get a very simple understanding of it in under 10 minutes. The cash conversion cycle is a metric that is quite important for businesses that operate in e-commerce, retail, or DTC, direct to consumer. Why is the cash conversion cycle really important? Well, it's because a lot of businesses that operate in e-commerce, retail, or DTC have an inherent cash flow problem. Now you might be asking yourself, cash flow problem? I thought e-commerce businesses print money. Well, they certainly can if you can solve for the cash conversion cycle. Let's look at a typical e-commerce business online. Let's say you're a shoe retailer online. There are four key events that need to happen. Number one, you need to buy the shoes from a supplier. Number two, you need to pay your supplier. Number three, you need to sell your inventory. And number four, you collect cash from your customers. Now here is the kicker. In order for you to start selling product, you need to take your own money and pay someone else, in this case, a supplier, to get product. What you're doing is essentially putting your own money, your own capital into a business before generating a single dollar of profit. So let's say you need to buy stock or inventory from a supplier. You pay this person $20,000 at the outset. This means that your business already has a cash hole of $20,000. Let's then assume that you sell this inventory, all of it, over time for $30,000. So you made a cash profit of $30,000 minus $20,000. The cash flow problem here is that you need to pay $20,000 before you've earned the $30,000 you collected from your customers. This isn't ideal because essentially what you're doing is putting $20,000 of your own money into the business before earning any type of profit. The source of this money is typically a loan from your family, a bank loan, or sometimes you're putting in your own savings. How can you improve this? Well, the ideal scenario would work something like this. Number one, you would buy the inventory. Number two, you would sell the inventory. Number three, you would collect cash from your customers. And number four, you would pay your supplier. Let's go back to the example we just looked at. Let's say you buy inventory from your supplier of worth $20,000. However, you don't pay him or her cash right away. Instead, you take that $20,000 of inventory and put it in your warehouse. You sell the inventory for $30,000 to your customers and you collect cash. And then once that's done, you go ahead and pay your supplier the $20,000 that you owe him for the inventory you initially purchased. In this example, you're not putting in your own capital at risk. You're not taking a bank loan. You're not taking a loan from family. Instead, you're financing your business using your supplier's capital. Calculating the cash conversion cycle. Now, at its core, the cash conversion cycle is calculated in a number of days. A lot of accountants will tell you that the formula to calculate the cash conversion cycle works something like this. It's your DIO or days inventory outstanding. This means the number of days that your inventory sits in your warehouse. And then you add days sales outstanding. This is the number of days it takes you to collect cash from your customers. And then you subtract days payable outstanding, which is the length of time or the number of days it takes you to pay your suppliers. These three components make up the cash conversion cycle. Just a couple of notes about the formula. For a lot of e-commerce businesses, cash collection really isn't an issue. 
So what I typically do is adjust this formula a little bit such that it only has two components. So a modified version of the cash conversion cycle would be DIO days inventory outstanding. This is the number of days it takes you to sell your inventory minus days payables outstanding, which is the number of days it takes you to pay your suppliers. The rule of thumb is this. If your cash conversion cycle is positive, that means greater than zero. It means that you basically take longer to collect cash from your customers and you have to pay your suppliers pretty quickly. This isn't an ideal situation. Instead, let's say your cash conversion cycle is negative, so it's less than zero. This means that you collect cash from your customers quicker than you pay your suppliers. This is an ideal situation to find yourself in. Let's look at an example with some very concrete numbers. Let's say you have business A. Business A takes 20 days to collect cash from their customers and they have to pay their suppliers within two days. So what's the cash conversion cycle for business A? It's 20 minus two, which is 18. Now let's say you have business B over here, which also takes 20 days to collect cash from its customers. However, it has got to pay its suppliers within 30 days. So its cash conversion cycle is 20 minus 30, which is negative 10. This is an ideal situation. Why is business B ideal? It is ideal because it takes you less time to sell inventory, collect cash, than it does to pay your suppliers. In very simple terms, business B's cash conversion cycle is negative. The case of business B, cash comes into the business before it goes out to pay its suppliers. Now, if we take a look at a real world example, a lot of sources say that Amazon cash conversion cycle is negative 27 days. That means basically Amazon collects cash from its customers and then it's only 27 days later that it pays its suppliers. How can you make your cash conversion cycle negative? Well, it's a very interesting question. If you've calculated your cash conversion cycle and it's currently positive, there are some strategies you could use to get your cash conversion cycle to become negative. The simplest way to get your cash conversion cycle to be negative is to essentially collect cash from your customers before you pay suppliers. Now, of course, this is easier said than done. There are two main strategies that you can use to get your cash conversion cycle to be negative. Number one, ask your supplier for longer payment terms. As is the case for Amazon, what you can try to do as a business owner is ensure that you collect cash from your customers before you have to pay your suppliers. So for example, let's assume your suppliers demand payment when they send you an invoice. Instead of paying that invoice when you get it from your supplier, ask for longer payment terms. So something like 60 days or 90 days. The further you can push out the deadline for that particular bill, the easier it will be for you to get a negative cash conversion cycle. Now the second strategy you can use to try and get a negative cash conversion cycle is to use a credit line or some sort of financing from a bank. In terms of steps, this is how you would get a negative cash conversion cycle with a credit line. Number one, you would buy your inventory. Number two, you would pay your supplier using your credit line. Number three, you would sell the inventory and collect cash from your customers. And number four, you would repay your credit line. In this example, you don't need to contribute your own savings or your own money or capital to buy the initial inventory. Instead, what you're doing in this case, it's taking the bank's money or a credit line and then paying your supplier. And then what happens is you collect cash from your customers, repay the credit line and keep your profit. So I hope this video helped you understand what the cash conversion cycle means. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up and check out my previous video here where I talk about how to calculate a startup's runway and burn rate. Thanks.